السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ اشد اللہ اللہ وحدہ لا شریک له و اشد انا محمد عبد و رسول اما بعد فاؤد بلّہ من شعیط نرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم و ادا سعل کابادی انی فنی قریب اجی بدا و تدا ادادان More than 1400 years ago, one day, a man came from the middle of the deserts and entered the mosque of the Holy Prophet Wasallam. His clothes has had dust on them, his hair all messed up, but he came into the company of the Holy Prophet ﷺ. and when he left the Holy Prophet of Allah Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa وسلم, said about that man that there are people that by their physical appearance might not appear as if their hair is well kept, that their dress is well cleaned. But they are so dear to Allah Ta'ala that when they say something, then by God, Allah listens to their prayer. Now imagine, how much more so is that true about the Khulafa? people whom Allah Himself establishes on this earth so that Allah's unity, His Tawheed could be established on the land. So today what I want to present before you are a few glimpses of some of those incidents, faith-inspiring incidents of the acceptance of dua, acceptance of prayers of the Khulafa. The verse which I have recited is taken from the Holy Quran, wherein Allah the Almighty says that when a servant of mine asks you, O Prophet Muhammad وسلم, about me, tell them I am near. Ujibu and I answer the prayer of the supplicant when he calls upon me. Hazrat Khalifatul Masihur Rabi Rahmahullah Ta'ala. Delivered a Friday sermon on the 25th of July, 1986. And Azur mentioned that our Imam, our missionary from uh, Nuremberg, Germany, Mukaram Abdul Basit Sahib, wrote to Huzur something which was very, very interesting. Abdul Basit Sahib reported about a local Amity member whose immigration case was in the courts and the hearing and the final decision was due. So this MD started writing a letter to the Khalifa of the community, to Khalifa to Masih Rabbi Rahimahullah And while he's writing this letter, sitting next to him is an Arab who is not Amadi. He just happens to be there. And this Arab goes to this MD Muslim and says, what are you doing? And the MD man replies, I'm writing a letter to my Khalifa. He said, whatever was worldly possible for me to do, I have done it. I have the lawyer. I have my paperwork in place. So everything which was possible for me to do, I've done it. Now I am writing to my Khalifa so that his prayers can work in my favor. So he wrote the letter to Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi Rabbi Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And three days later, he got the response back as well. Back in those days, you write a letter and within two to three days, you would even receive a response back if you were in Europe. So 
this man received his response on the third day from Khalifa Tamsir Rabbi Rahmanullah Taala. And the day he received his response, the same day, the German court approved his immigration case. This had a very profound effect on that Arab friend of his. So his Arab friend requested him, could you also please write a letter seeking prayers of your Khalifa for me? So this MD wrote a letter to Huzur explaining that Huzur, you know, I was writing a letter and this Arab friend of mine saw me write a letter. So he explained the whole background. And then he said, Huzur, I'm requesting you to also pray for this non-MD Arab friend of mine as well. So Huzur prayed for him and Huzur sent his response. That, don't worry, I have prayed for you. Allah Ta'ala, inshallah Ta'ala, you know, will bless you. The day that Arab received the response in writing from Khalifa al Masih, again the same day, that Arab man's case got approved as well. So now, it became the talk of the town. People started talking about this. In their circle, that an MD man wrote to his Khalifa and... Uh, the MD Khalifa's prayers are answered by Allah Ta'ala. So, another Pakistani friend who was not MD heard this vakya, this incident. So he approached this MD Muslim and he said that there is a family member of mine who has been bedridden, who has been sick for the longest time and the doctors have not been able to diagnose the exact illness as to why this man is sick and what is he ill with? What is he down with? So could you also write to your Khalifa if he could pray for this relative of mine? So again, this Ahmadi Muslim wrote a letter detailing Hazur. I was initially writing a letter and this Arab saw me. And then you also prayed for him and his case got approved. And now people are talking about this. And here is another friend of mine and he's requesting me to request your prayers. So Khalifa Rabbi Rahmullah Ta'ala prayed for him and sent a response. And on the letter, it was dated. The letter was dated, so the person knew that that's the date that Khalifa Tumasi Rabbi Rahmullah Ta'ala prayed for him. And to his amazement, when he received the letter, the date on that letter was the same date that by the grace of Allah, the doctors were able to successfully finally diagnose what this man had. And as a result of it, they were able to uh, cure him. To a worldly eye, this might be a coincidence. But to the eyes of believers, this is no coincidence, my friends. It happened once, twice, three times. This was no incident, coincidence. 4th of May, 2008, Hazrat Khalifa Tamasi Khamis Ayyad Nasr al-Aziz was visiting the Far East countries. And on that specific day, it was a Thursday, Hazrat Khalifa Tamasi Khamis Ayyad Nasr al-Aziz was in uh, Fiji, one of the Fijian islands which is known as Nandi, Nandi Islands of Fiji. And around 2.30 a.m., super early in the morning, at the Hajjah time, people from Rabwa and London and other parts of the world started calling the mission house where Hazrat Khalifa Tumasi Ayyadahullah bin Saziz was staying. They had just heard on the news that the neighboring island to Nandi, Fiji, was just hit with a tsunami and the intensity of that tsunami was so strong that the Indonesian tsunami looked like a walk in the park in front of the tsunami. Those of you who might not be familiar with the Indonesian tsunami, hundreds of thousands of people died as a result of the catastrophe which that uh, tsunami brought forth. So naturally, all these MDs were, were fearful and they were calling to inquire if everything was okay. But obviously, in the middle of the night, there is no way that a message could be sent to the 
residence of the Khalifa of Masih. So people waited until the Fajr Salat. And at the time of Fajr Salat, Hazur Ayyadahullah bin Asaziz came out of his residence and Jamaat officials presented this report to Hazur that Hazur has been on the news that the neighboring island has been hit by a very powerful tsunami and it's on its way here. And they're saying that this island is going to be wiped out. And they, of course, requested Hazur's prayers. Hazur went to the masjid and led everyone in Fajr Salat. It is reported that that Fajr Salat was very extensive, was very long, especially the sujood. The prostrations were very, very long. Hazur took his time and he prayed, he cried his heart out. But when the Salat was finished, Hazur turned around and addressed the members of the Jamaat. And the words of Hazrat Khalifa to Masih, Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al-Aziz were, Fikr na kare, Allah Ta'ala fazal farmayega, kuch nahi hoga. Do not worry, do not worry whatsoever. Allah will show His grace, Allah will have His fazal. Everything will be fine, nothing will happen. After saying this, Khalifa to Masih, Ayyadahullah bin Nasr al-Aziz went back into his residence and the office holders of Jamaat went straight to the TV. They turned on the TV to watch the news and now on the news they were saying that the intensity of the tsunami has started to deteriorate. It has started to go down. Two and a half hours later, they were showing on the breaking news that the tsunami has dissipated altogether, that there was no more tsunami anymore. Next morning, the newspapers in Fiji bore this headline that the fact that this tsunami died out without hitting Fiji is no less than a miracle in itself. But we, the Ahmadi Muslims, know that this miracle was brought forth by the prayer of that one man who is our beloved Imam, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih, Aidahullah bin Nasr al Aziz. This was no coincidence. In 2005, Hazur Anwar Ayyadahullah Ta'ala bin Nasr al Aziz went to Canada, Western Canada, and he was going to lay the foundation for the Calgary Mosque, Masjid Noor. And the day before, the Amir Jamaat of Canada at that time had a mulaqat with Hazur Anwar in which he requested that Hazur, tomorrow is the, the official break laying ceremony for Masjid Noor. But the weather channels are reporting that tomorrow at that time, uh, the, actually the entire day, uh, there is going to be a severe thunderstorm. So I'm requesting your humble prayers. It is mentioned that Hazur paused for a few moments. Most likely he prayed to his God. And then Hazur looked up at the Amir Jamaat Canada and said the following words Jis masjid ka sange bunyad ham rakhne ja rahe hain wo bhi khuda ka hi ghar hai aur mausam bhi khuda ke haath mein hai isliye isko khuda par chhod de Allah fazal farmayega He said we have gathered here to lay the brick or the foundation of the house of Allah and weather is also in the hands of Allah. So leave this matter in the hands of Allah. Allah will show His grace. Allah ka fazal zahir hoga and everything will be fine. Next day, the ceremony began, began and there was not a single shred of cloud. Nothing. It was a two hour long program, the program happened. And then as soon as Khalifa al Masih sat in his car and the door was shut, right there and then, a thunderstorm came and it started to rain. And then it rained for the next several hours. Was this a coincidence? Of course not. Our missionary sahib, 
Mukaram Imam Lukman Ahmed Sahib of Ottawa, Canada, he once mentioned that in the year 2015, when he was stationed in Quebec, he was stationed in Quebec City, and he got this email from Jamaat that one of the, the politicians at a state level, at a provincial level, has shown interest in going to UK Jalsa. So Jamaat asked Imam Lukman that you go to UK Jalsa this year as an official representative of Jamaat Canada and you accompany this, this French politician. Imam Lukman says that uh, this state politician had the honor of meeting Hazur Anwar Ayyadahullah bin Asr al Aziz along with the Mir Jamaat Canada. And at that time, he says that Imam Luqman was also blessed to be present in that room when this meeting was taking place. So over the course of this meeting, this politician requested Khalifat al-Masih that it is his personal desire that next time hazur anwar visits Canada, that hazur anwar also visit Quebec, the province of Quebec. And this politician will make sure that there is a state-level uh, welcome for Khalifa al Masih and a dinner organized in Hazur's honor. So Hazur Anwar Ayyadahullah bin Asaziz turned towards Jama Amir Sahib Canada and he said, When you make your plan, look at the feasibility and then let me know. So everyone was excited. Next year was 2016, and in the month of October and November, Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Ayyadahullah bin Asaziz visited Canada. But few days before Hazur visited Canada, or maybe a few weeks, the program was presented to Hazur, and Hazur okayed every single item on that program. But he put a, a cross mark in front of his visit to Quebec. He did not give any explanation. He does not need to. He just crossed it out. And he said, this part or this leg of the trip is not approved. Everything else is fine. So the program was sent to Jamaat Ambiya Canada and their National Public Relations Secretary, Asif Khan Sahib, spoke with the Abid Khan Sahib, Hazur's press secretary. He said, you know, we, we put so much effort into this and finally now that we're able to secure this program, Hazur Enver has canceled it. So is there a way if this could be, uh, you know, re-looked at? if Hazur could reconsider this. And of course, once Khalifa to Masih has decided, his tawakkul then is on Allah Ta'ala. So Abid Khan Sahib most likely did not go. Imam Luqman says that Abid Khan Sahib said to Asif Khan Sahib that, you know, the decision is from Hazur. So obviously nothing can be done now. The trip began, Hazur landed in Canada. And as the trip was happening, one day, the PR secretary, Asif Khan Sahib, went to Abid Khan Sahib and said, the same politician who had invited Hazur and was playing an integral part in Hazur's visit to Quebec was just arrested in a personal scandal. And had Hazur agreed to visiting Quebec, he would have been photographed with that politician two days before this politician was arrested. So he said this to Abid Khan Sahib, and Abid Khan Sahib went to Hazrat Khalifa to Masih, Ayyadahullah bin Asaziz. And he said, Hazur, this is what just happened. Hazur said, when the program was presented before me, I looked at the program, and when I came to this leg of the program about Quebec City, something just didn't feel right in my heart. So I crossed it out. So this is how Allah Ta'ala communicates with the Khalifa of that time. There is another incident of somewhat similar nature. But this time around, I myself am one of the people who witnessed it. The year was 2008. My class had proposed to Jamia Amdiya Canada and through administration of Jamia Canada, to Hazrat Amir al-Mu'mineen Khalifa al-Masih al-Khamis 
If Hazur Anwar would so permit that my class be allowed to go and travel to Qadian and spend one entire semester over there, of course, as a result of this, our Urdu would improve. And not only that, but we would be able to benefit from the spiritual environment of Qadian itself. And of course, this was the centenary year. And Hazur Anwar, inshallah, will be visiting. So we will be able to do some duties over there in Qadian, take part in the Jalsa, the historic Jalsa, and then meet Khalifa al Masih and then travel back. So Hazur Anwar, Ayyidahullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz, approved this program. It was okay, we purchased the tickets. And many of my classmates actually departed from Canada. Some were in Europe and some were already in Pakistan, in Lahore, about to cross the border. If I'm not mistaken, this was probably the month of July, 2008. I was in my home, my flight was due in two or three days. I got a phone call from Jamia's principal, Mulana Mubarak Ahmed Nazir Sahib. May Allah Ta'ala give him long and healthy life. And he informed me on the phone. He said, Beta, Hazure Anwar ki taraf se fax hai hai, aur Hazur ne ye trip cancel kar diya. No reason given, nothing. He said, My son, just, I just received a fax from Hazar Khalifa to Masih, and Hazur Anwar has cancelled this trip. So do not leave. I said, as you say, sir, I cancel my flight. And those friends of mine who were already in Europe, nothing could be done. Those who were already in, in Pakistan, about to cross the border from Vaga border, Lahore, into uh, India, they requested if they could be given permission for three, four days to visit Qadian and then return right back. So that permission was given. But everybody was shocked. Nobody had a clue what just happened. Fast forward to three, four months later, it was the month of November the same year, 2008. Hazrat Khalifa al Ayyadahullah bin Aziz has landed in India. And if I'm not mistaken, he was at that time in Delhi. And the city of Mumbai was attacked by terrorists. And the entire nation was put on red alert. And the state official who was meeting Khalifa al Masih, he said, we would be able to provide security for you should you want to continue and go to Qadiyan. And Hazur Anwar Ayyidahullah Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz responded that I am worried about thousands of members of my Jamaat who will be traveling because of my presence in Qadiyan. And of course, the government was not able to provide security to all of them. Hazur Anwar Ayyidahullah bin Asil Aziz canceled the rest of his trip and he went back to London. The point that I'm trying to highlight here is, is that when Khalifa al-Masih Ayyidahullah bin Asazi says something, even without giving any explanation behind it, when he makes a decision, the decree of Allah the Almighty is working behind it. Three years ago, I was about to get married and I wrote to Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Ayyadahullah bin Aziz that Hazur, you're very graciously getting me married in Pakistan, Rabwa. So allow me to apply for my wife's visa. Those of you who have gone through this visa process, you know that it's at least a year long process. So Hazur's reply came back to me in which Hazuri Anwar Ayyidahullah bin Aziz said to me that he is giving me one month off that I should go get married, apply for my wife's visa and then bring her with me. So I went to Pakistan and the Jamaat officials who were there to uh, coordinate with me or help with me, they said to me in a very funny way, they said, you know, we've been sitting here for the longest time 
We have sent many families, MD families, from here to USA. It's at least a year-long process. So hold your horses. Don't think that it's going to happen within a month. I said, okay, we'll see. So we applied for the visa process. We applied for the interview, and the interview date came. And I was not allowed to enter the, the American embassy in Islamabad. So I had to sit outside while my wife went inside the Islamabad embassy, the USA embassy in Islamabad. And I had told her that, you know, I am here on R1, and R2 visa is by default approved anyways. So the most they can do is they can take some time for security clearance, and that's about it. So don't worry, be confident, and inshallah ta'ala, we've already written to Hazur, so inshallah Allah ta'ala fazal firmayega. You know, Allah will bless us. She went inside, and about 40, 45 minutes later, she walked outside, and she was shocked, and she told me they rejected the visa. They rejected the visa that was sure not to be rejected. So there was nothing we could do, and they handed her over, uh, they handed a yellow piece of paper to her which stated very generic reasons why someone's visa is uh, rejected. But in our specific case, their main argument was that your husband does not have a US visa on his Canadian passport. Now the funny thing is, on a Canadian passport, I do not need a US visa. All I get is a piece of paper that gets attached to my passport that says that this is the equivalent for the visa. Hence, I can live and I can work here. But the people over there, they probably had not seen this piece of paper before, and they were used to looking at that shiny sticker, which they call the visa. So they rejected. And they said, until this issue is resolved, until your husband gets this kind of a visa on his Canadian passport, you cannot reapply. You can't do anything. So I called here. I informed the Jamaat headquarters here in USA. And they said, OK, well, nothing can be done. We'll look into some you know, uh, Amity lawyer, and then we'll see what can be done. So you start packing your bags and start making your way back home. We came back the same day from Islamabad to Rabbah, and I wrote a letter to Hazrat Khalifa to Masih Ayyidahullah bin Saziz, and I mentioned this dilemma to Hazur. I mentioned that Hazur, the restriction they're placing, there's nothing I can do about it. It's like a, a bad loophole of some sort. I can't do anything legally to address this issue. Two days had gone by since I had written this letter to Khalifa Tumusi, and I got a phone call around 8 or 8.30 in the morning, in Rabwa. I answered the phone, and it was somebody who was speaking with me in Pakistani accent, but English, and said to me that he's calling from the U.S. Embassy from Islamabad, and then asked me for my credentials, my name, and I verified it. And then he said that, could I speak with your wife? Uh, you had applied for her visa, could I speak with her? So I handed over the phone to my wife, and then she was speaking with them. And here is how that conversation went. The man on the other end of the phone said, we did an internal review, and we came to this conclusion that we made mistake, and we apologize. Send in your passport immediately, and we will reconsider. But this reconsidering can take up to two to three months. So we sent the passport immediately the same day from Faisalabad. And about five or six days later, we received this email that the visa has been issued. Come and collect your passport. So I went, collected the passport, came back. And I went back to the same Jamaat office holder. And while I was speaking with his colleague, this office holder came from behind me. And he said, Hanji Rabbani sahab, ho gaya interview, karali tasalli, that Got the interview done, got rejected, satisfied now? Didn't we tell you so? So before I could respond, the man that I was speaking with said, congratulate Rabbani sahab, his wife got the visa. So now the man was shocked. So he said, okay, well, 
you know, whenever you leave, take your wife with you then, I guess. So he said this is why he's here, to inform us that he's leaving today and his wife is going with him. So this is how the prayers of Khalifat al-Masih get accepted. And the reason why I'm mentioning these waqiyat in front of you is so that you can connect on that personal level with Khalifa to Masih. Hazrat Khalifa Rabbi Rahmanullah Ta'ala in his Friday sermon of 25th of July 1986 said, ye ki hai. Sirf ye Don't expect to just see the sign of the acceptance of dua in my person alone. Apni zat mein ye kafiyat dekhne ki tamanna kare. Desire to see such signs in your person as well. Ahmadiyat is taraf aapko bula rahi hai. Ahmadiyat is calling you towards this path. Ahmadiyat aapko peer parasti ki taraf nahi. Balke khuda ka dost banne ki taraf bula rahi hai. Ahmadiyat is calling you so that you become a friend of Allah Ta'ala. And not someone who worships a friend of Allah Ta'ala. Is liye, ye sare waqiyat sunane ka maqsad sirf itna hai. कि हमारा ओढ़ना और बिछोना दुआ ही है और दुआ ही हमारा ओढ़ना और बिछोना हमेशा रहनी चाहिए the reason why i am mentioning these incidents before you is so that you understand that prayer supplication is everything for us it has been and it always should be खुदा से जाति ताल्लुक में जमाते अहमदिया की जिंदगी है in your personal relationship with allah lies the life of this jamaat aur ye taluq kisi ek insaan ke taluq ke nateeje mein kafi nahi ho sakta and this connection is not going to be sufficient only because of one man's connection with allah taala balke bakasrat duniya ke kone kone mein har ahmadi ko ye taluq ke zati taur par qaim karna hoga however he says in different parts of the world in multitudes MD Muslims have to establish this connection with their God. And you have to become a sign of Allah the Almighty's existence by having that communion with Allah. And then Huzu said, And this is not a difficult task. Rather, it is the easiest of all the tasks. Aaj ye maidan khali pada hai. Today, this field is wide open. Aaj arab ha arab khuda ke bande aise hain, jo khuda ki taraf peet pher karke, peet karke, aur dunia ki lazaton ko muh ke saamne rakh kar chal rahe hain. There are billions upon billions of such people, such creation of Allah Ta'ala, who have their backs turned towards Allah Ta'ala. Kitane hain. Is maidan mein jo khuda ko khuda maan kar pukarne wale hain. How many are there in this field who call upon Allah Ta'ala believing that He is their God? Pas har wo awaz jo khuda ko samee mein kalb se yaad karegi. Therefore, every single voice which calls upon Allah Ta'ala with the firm intention of the heart. Har wo awaz jo kamil yakin ke saath apne rab ko pukarege. Every single voice that calls upon its Lord with perfect belief in Him. Main aapko khush khabri deta hoon ke wo aawaz zaroor suni jayegi. I give you glad tidings that that voice will be answered. Wa akhiru dawana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.